Hare Krishna, dear devotees, welcome back once again to our ever ongoing series in the glories of our most beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale, Sri Mati Bhaktivedanta Swamanity Namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Goravani Pacharine, Nivishesha Shunyavadi, Pastraja Deshatarine. So, today we're continuing with our mini-series on stimulation for ecstatic love, and this will be part uh, 62. 62. For this lecture, I would like to explore the influence of paintings uh, in Braj Lila, which uh, stimulate the Brajabhasi's love for Radha and Krishna, and in turn, our love for them as well. <coughs> so to begin with, um, we as Gaudiya Vaishnavas accept that a painting of Krishna is non-different than the Lord himself. We actually go so far as to say that a proper painting of Krishna can be considered a deity of the Lord. That's a bold statement. But it's actually confirmed in Shastra. <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam 11, 27, 12 says that one of the eight types of deities is a deity painted out of color. A painting. Shaili daru mai lohi lepya lekya cha sa kati manu mai mani mai prati mashta vidhasmrita. That's the verse. The deity form of the Lord is said to appear in eight varieties stone, wood, metal, earth, paint, sand, the mind, or jewels. By <coughs> proper paintings, I mean to say paintings that conform to the descriptions of Krishna given by uh, bona fide scriptures uh, and pure devotees of the Lord. And as such, such paintings of Krishna are not imaginary. Srila Prabhupada writes in his purport to Srimad Bhagavatam 4.8.46, it's really nice. Sometimes we give instructions to our students about the bodily features of the Lord and they paint him. Their paintings are not imaginary. The description is given through disciplic succession, just like that given by Narad Muni, who sees the Lord and describes his bodily features. <coughs> Therefore, such descriptions should be accepted, and if they are painted, that is not imaginative, imaginative paintings. Now, one of my godbrothers, <coughs> Vishnu Das, who um, painted for the uh, BBT in the early years, asked Shri Prabhupada the best way <coughs> to paint Krishna so that people would realize that he's the supreme personality of Godhead and a real person. Shri Prabhupada replied, First understand that he, Krishna, is most beautiful, the strongest, and never alone. He is always with his associates. And then Vishuddhas continued asking Sri Prabhupada, if Krishna should be uh, shown with some animals and some trees, as these were mentioned, as also being his associates. So Sri Prabhupada replied, yes, even the trees, flowers, birds, and cows are all his devotees. You can paint them. Then Vishnadas asked if he should try to create, like, uh, how could you say, uh, high quality paintings. And Prabhupada replied, You know the art, I have seen, but your service has no limit, so flood the world with these paintings everywhere. Hare Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada wrote to Jadarani Dasi that such paintings, this is a famous quote, of course, are windows to the spiritual world windows to the spiritual world. He actually instructed her uh, in many of the details of uh, painting. Uh, in a letter t uh, dated May 26, 1970, Prabhupada wrote to her, <coughs> the art department is doing very nicely and surely the production will improve even more by the grace of Krishna. You are all being inspired by Krishna how to portray the Lord and his associates for the devotee's eyes. So everyone who sees uh, these transcendental pictures will turn to become a devotee. 
will turn to become a devotee, and that is our aim. Preaching through paintings, windows to the spiritual world. Now, Sri Prabhupada called his favorite painting Wonderful Krishna. In this painting, it's a famous painting, uh, Sri Radha is kneeling and offering flowers at Krishna's lotus feet as he stands uh, in his classic threefold uh, bending pose. Uh, in that form is uh, an eternal youth, Krishna's dress, his actions, his features, uh, his excellences surpass those of his childhood or boyhood or any one of the other uh, phases of his youth. It's described that his original eternal form is that of an adolescent uh, in the last stage of youth. And that transcendental form is the source of all other forms and ages. So Prabhupada liked that painting. <coughs> now, Sridhar Prabhupada is co of course not the only one who appreciate it, appreciates Krishna in paintings. <coughs> So does Krishna's dear most, Srimati Radharani, particularly uh, when she's in the mood of Purvarag. Purvarag. We've discussed Purvarag, I think, two years ago, but Purvarag is the young gopi's mood of loving Krishna even before they meet him for the first time. It's described as the stage where the lover and the beloved are unable to meet due to social restrictions, like we've discussed that before in Vrindavan. Uh, like Radha and Krishna when they were young adolescents, they, the, the social restrictions were that boys and girls couldn't meet. So during that stage of their lives, whenever Radharani would see a painting of Krishna, it would greatly intensify her love for the Lord. So that specific mood of Purvaraga is called Chitra Pate Darshana. <coughs> Chitra Pate Darshana literally means seeing a painting of one's beloved. <coughs> now, there's actually several types of Purvarag. I could actually list them there. There's Saksha Darshana, which is a, a direct vision of the beloved. There's Swapne Darshana. It's seeing um, a vision of one's beloved in a dream. Bhatta Mukhe Shravana, hearing about the beloved from uh, professional reciters. Dutti Mukhe Shravana, hearing about the beloved uh, from a messenger. Saki Mukhe Shravana, hearing about uh, one's beloved from a girlfriend. Uh, Gite Hoitre Shravana, hearing a song about the Beloved, and Vapsi Dhvani Shravana, hearing the sound of the Beloved's flute. This is Purvarag. Even before meeting Krishna, if the young gopis experience any of those things, it stimulates their love for the Lord. But for now we're speaking about Radha's love for Krishna increasing by Chitra Pate Darshana, uh, seeing a painting of him. And I was able to find an example of this in Rupa Goswami's Vigdag Damadava uh, 2.23. Here, um, uh, referring to her friends Lalita and Vishaka, Sri Radha says to Krishna, My near and dear ones uh, said to me that I should cool my eyes by seeing your beautiful form painted on a slate. Painted on a slate. Shiva, Shiva, we simple-minded village girls do not know that we are gazing at a person who constantly increases the flames of the greatest forest fire of separation. It's by seeing a painting. A win or win would that day be ours. <laughs> so another example I found is given by Srila uh, Kavikarnapura in his Alankara Kshtuba, uh, 535. Uh, therein, Sri Radha is speaking to a friend. O Saki, while wandering in Braj, what delightful person did you see? You painted him and brought his image near me. You've painted him and brought his image near to me. And simply by seeing this image, the glory of my lineage as well as my entire life is slipping away. Vrindavaneshwari Shimati Radharani Ki. 
And um, there's also a beautiful verse in Sri Rupa Goswami's Padyavali, uh, verse 366, wherein we hear Srimati Radharani herself uh, uh, painting uh, uh, a painting of Krishna. <laughs> she paints a painting of Krishna, Radharani. In this verse, uh, a young gopi is speaking to Krishna. Krishna, when Sri Radha meditated on you in order to draw your picture, Kamadev drew his bow. When her two fingers moved to grasp the paintbrush, Kamadev placed an arrow on the bowstring. When she began to draw, Kamadev shot an arrow. She was severely wounded. O Keshava, she fainted, and for a long time she was motionless as a painted picture. Wow. <coughs> Now it's also interesting that in Krishna book, Srila Prabhupada writes that Krishna himself, Krishna himself, not only Radharani paints, <laughs> but Krishna himself learned the art of painting from who? From Sandapani Muni, wh when he was in Gurukul. Uh, writing about Krishna and Balaram in chapter 45 of Krishna book, Prabhupada writes, uh, they, meaning Krishna and Balaram, learned the various types of painting from uh, simple village arts up to the professional stage. They also learned how to paint tilak on the face by making different kinds of dots on the forehead and, and cheeks. And they learned the art of, uh, of uh, making uh, paintings on the floor with the liquid paste of rice and flour. Such paintings are very popular at auspicious ceremonies, Prabhupada writes, performed at household affairs or in the temple. Krishna and Balaram learn how to make a resting place with flowers and how to describe, or rather how to decorate clothing and limbs with what? Colorful paintings. So Krishna's an expert painter. <laughs> now, <coughs> um, one of... Srimati Radharani's names is Kalavati, which means that she is skilled in all the 64 traditional arts and crafts of devotional service to Krishna. Now these famous 64 arts are described, uh, as I researched, in a number of our scriptures, including Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, that's 10th canto, uh, 45th chapter, Brahma Samhita, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, 2.184, Vrindavan Mahima Amrita, and also I found in Govinda Lila Amrita, the 64 arts. But specifically in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the art of painting is included as number five of the 64 qualities listed. It's called Alaya. Alaya. Alaya is defined as um, drawing calligraphy and painting pictures to the highest professional stage of masterful painting, a layer. And interestingly enough, <coughs> all the Brajagopis, they learn all of these 64 arts from Sri Radha. She teaches them. And in the Haridas Sampradaya in Vrindavan, it is said, it's really beautiful, the art of dance is manifested by the walk of the gopis. The art of singing is manifested by their voices. The art of acting is manifested through their eyes. The art of playing is manifested by their laughing. The art of decorating is manifested by their apparel. The art of painting is manifested by moving their fingers. And the art of love is manifested by their very lives. Hare Krishna. Now, going a little deeper here, getting into more nectarian detail. Love is in the details. The main gopi who serves the divine couple through uh, this art of painting is Chittaleka Saki, or just Chittasaki, as she's sometimes called. Chittasaki is the most famous for her painting. Actually, she's famous <laughs> for many things. In Radha Krishna Gunadesha Deepika, Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada describes her as follows. 
Chitra can detect hidden intentions in a love letter. She is a master cook. She knows tastes just by glancing. She strikes water pots to make amazing music. Chitra Devi knows astronomy, astrology, uh, raising domestic animals, uh, gardening, collecting herbs, and how to, how to make tasty, uh, tangy nectar drinks. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Now, Rasa Shekhar, he's a, a, a medieval Brajbasi poet of, of Vrindavan, I discovered him in the Vrindavan Research Institute, wrote in his famous Rasa Pradika that Chitra's village called Chikshole, it's near Varshana, we went there on our last uh, Kartik Parikama, uh, it's known as the village of the master of all art forms, where Chittasaki is the uh, connoisseur of painting. And her village is surrounded by trees of kushum, kushum, which ooze lac or resin that the girls use for painting. And Chitraleka herself lives in a palace in the village called Chitra Mandir, or sometimes uh, it's just referred to as the Palace of Paintings. And in that palace are a thousand and eight pillars made of red ruby stones. And the path from the main courtyard there takes one to Chitrashala, uh, which is, uh, how would you say, the classroom of arts where young gopis expertly paint outfits, jewelry, uh, crowns, umbrellas, canopies, chandeliers, and carpets for all of Radha and Krishna's pastimes. I read that they use conch shells as cups that hold bright, effulgent, and very deep colors. And the colors themselves smell of fragrant flowers and look very satisfying. I thought that was interesting. They look very satisfying. Now it's written about those gopis. Gold rings are like ankle bells on their fingers, which dance on their work that expand the glories of Chitrasaki. It is said that by their seva, they are filling the world of love with art and colors of awe. It's also written that every corner of Chitra Shala, the, uh, the classroom of arts, is decorated with paintings of pastimes of Radhe and Sham. Also, all these gopis, they know the art of making uh, natural paints uh, and, and ingredients used for the painting. They actually collect them from, this is interesting, it's so detailed. They, they collect them from 12 forests in Vrindavan. And even gives the names of the forests. Kamudavan, uh, Talavan, Lohavan, Bahulavan, uh, Vrindavan, Padravan, Shantivan, Kamelavan, Kamavan, Belavan, Snehavan, uh, Champavan. Now that's 12. <laughs> those are the 12 forests where the best of flowers grow. And those 12 forests were actually gifted to Chitraleka Saki by uh, Bhisha Banu Maharaj, the father of Srimati Radharani, specifically for making 12 different emotions appear in Shirada's eyes. That's like poetry. For making 12 different emotions appear in Shirada's eyes. And this Rasik Bhakta, <laughs> Rasa Shekhar, writes that. Whenever Radha and Krishna want to disguise themselves, they take shelter of Chitraleka Saki, who paints their faces and limbs to be uh, perfectly disguised. In doing so, she paints red grape nectar on their cheeks, red rose nectar with a red pigment on their lips, and paints their eyes with a gold stick dipped in carillium. Who wants to hear anything else? <laughs> the poet concludes, these are the cosmetics which fade the joy of Cupid 
and make him feel ashamed by his own beauty. These are the cosmetics which fade the joy of Cupid and make him feel ashamed of his own beauty. Hare Krishna. Now, <coughs> we always like to include pastimes in the lectures. So there's a wonderful pastime described by Srila Rupa Goswami in his illustrious drama, Vigdagda Madhava, wherein another gopi, a Saki, uh, Vishaka, uh, her expertise in painting is glorified. It's really nice. It's one of my favorite, actually. And Lord Chaitanya uh, heard this pastime in an assembly of senior devotees, uh, including Ramananda Roy, in Jagannath Puri 500 years ago, and very much appreciated it, as we will also. It begins with Lalita and Vishaka finding Srimati Radharani hiding and lamenting in separation from Krishna, Vipalamba Bhav, in a grove of Vetasi trees uh, somewhere in the Vrindavan forest. And seeing her like that, Lalita and Vishaka were heartbroken. And when Vishaka Devi inquired from Shirada as to the cause of her sorrow, Shirada just sighed and lowering her head, she said, let me disclose the truth of the matter and then you will understand my dilemma. So Shirada said, since I first heard the name of a person called Krishna, I have lost all good sense. Sometime later, I heard a flute song played by some unknown cowherd boy and an intense madness arose in my heart. Then Vishaka, you drew a picture of a most handsome boy. When I was alone gazing at your drawing, that beautiful boy came out of the portrait and ignited an inferno in my heart with a smile and touch. Now my mind has become attached to him as well. I'm condemned, for I have become simultaneously attached to three persons. Since such wantonness is unpardonable for a chaste woman, I would be better, it would be better for me to die and be freed from my sins. Wow. Now, Lalita, who had been listening very carefully, she asked, um, Radha, did this happen in a dream? So she, Radha, replied, whether I was dreaming or awake, I don't know. All I know is that my burning heart now longs for that handsome boy's touch. And overcome, Shirada said softly, Wicked heart, are you not ashamed to love three persons simultaneously? You love some boy whose name is Krishna. You also love a coward who plays a flute. And now you love this boy in the picture. O oh heart, when I kill my body, only then will I be freed from you. So hearing Shirada speak in this way, Lalita said with compassion, My dear friend, it is springtime. None of us are immune from the attacks of Kamadev. <laughs> but unmoved by Lalita's attempt to appease her, Radharani, uh, turning towards Lalita and point to, pointing to a nearby flower vine, she said, If you tru truly want to cure me, then wrap this flowering vine around my neck like a noose and hang me. <laughs> so Lalita and Vishaka quickly covered their ears in horror of Shirada's words. And tears burst from their eyes as they said, if you continue to say such horrible things, we will be the ones to die. So suddenly, Lalita, Purnamasi is arranging all this, suddenly Lalita had a revelation. And as her eyes opened wide, she uh, smiled brightly and she said, My dear friend Radharani, I understand what has happened. How could you, the most chaste of all Brudges gopis, be in love with three different men? It is simply not possible. Listen to me. The three persons, the one named Krishna, the flute player, and the boy in the picture are all the same person. Quite simply, your heart is drawn to three features of Krishna, his name, his pastimes, and his form. 
Your love is supremely chaste, and you may now give up your shame as well as your plans to end your life. Dear one, even the least reputable of the beautiful girls of Gokul could never love any other man than Krishna. So Rupa Goswami then writes, Hope then dawned in Radha's eyes as she breathed a sigh of relief. Then she thought to herself, My dear mind, be peaceful. The man you seek to attain is none other than the refuge of all living beings, the controller of all worlds, and the soul of all souls. Such a sweet pastime. So I believe we may have more uh, about painting in Vrindavan Leela and painting pastimes as a means of uh, stimulation for ecstatic love, which we will continue with um, next Friday. I'd like to uh, conclude today with a beautiful verse, and it's by one of our favorite Brajabhasi poets, uh, Surdas, uh, in his poem, Asi Dev Padi. Asi Dev Padi. The bow of his beauty hit the arrow of a glance and pierced my heart into two different parts. One part of my heart was beating with hope, and the other part with the desire to see him, Krishna, again. My eyes were staring at his beautiful face like a madman continuously stares at a painting. Without ever blinking, I was admiring his picture-like beauty, which was painted in my memory by all mediums, my heart, my soul, and my mind. Surdas says, Govardhan Dari is the master of capturing the hearts of his devotees. Thank you, Surdas. And thank you, Srila Prabhupada, for being the revealer of the Dham, the revealer of all this knowledge to us, your followers. So I'm in Hyderabad, uh, India right now, in the midst of a preaching tour here in um, South India. And um, today I have three programs, <laughs> three lectures. Uh, one in the temple and two at uh, different universities. So I have to get going now. Well, thank you and we'll... We'll see you next Friday. Hare Krishna. Shishi Gorni Thai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Varashama Shundar Ki, Vinda Veneshwari, Shimati Varani Ki, Chitta Devi Saki Ki, Maya Purdama Ki, Shishi Gorni Thai Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagi Ki, Nitai Gaur Pimanandi, Jay Jay Sisi Radhe Sham.